so uh, a little bit about myself. Um, uh, as was mentioned, uh, I'm a, a indie game developer uh, that actually uses Ruby to build video games. I've been doing it for about seven years now. And um, sent, uh, in the last two years, I actually partnered up with uh, uh, three other uh, three other people um, um, and started expanding, uh, trying to trying to push Ruby to the limits as far as uh, what we can do past just uh, the server side. And uh, during during that time period, um, so we launched a. Uh, partners together launched a, a product called uh, Dragon Ruby, and uh, we ended up creating a Ruby runtime uh, that is built uh, on uh, LVM. Uh, LVM is a compiler tool chain. Uh, basically, it's Clang, and um, and uh, the the underlying um, uh, intermediate representations available there, and uh, it's built on. Uh, our, our uh, AOT compiler, uh, MRuby, and uh, LibSDL. LibSDL is uh, called Simple Direct Media Layer. It's, it, it's basically a low-level cross-platform C API that is used to render across everything. Um, I mean, Valve uses it, uh, Steam uses it, uh, every game engine out there in the entire world, uh, uses it uses it and so one of the partners that i brought on was uh his name is ryan uh, ryan gordon and uh just his uh personal profile with regards to uh engines and games that he's worked on um he's worked on Turok dinosaur hunter ghost simulator left for dead limbo uh second life um unreal tournament 2004 um but these are these are just some of the few things that um he, he's worked on and together we were able to kind of create a runtime that allowed me to uh, actually release a dark room, uh, which is a minimalist text-based RPG that uh, uh, was that luckily went viral on iOS uh, on mobile and helped me start my game dev career. But we were able to port this to the Nintendo Switch, so. Um, we have Ruby running on the Nintendo Switch, uh, PC, Mac, Linux, uh, web, and mobile. So after many, 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 many years of work, uh, it's about three, three years to get this uh, runtime up and running, uh, we have something that's just exciting. It, it's just, we're just, I'm just excited to be a Ruby dev um, and to kind of feel, kind of see people see the magic again and rediscover, rediscover Ruby, uh, especially uh, from the game dev community who's, uh, they, they rarely deal with the um, uh, server side and they just want to explore uh, building a video game just as a hobby. And uh, they come in and see Ruby for the first time and see the magic of the language. And uh, it just feels, it feels so good to uh, kind of like relive that. Um, so, Luckily enough, let me hide this. We're actually sponsoring uh, a game jam. So if you go to uh, nokiajam.dragonruby.org, we're actually giving away free licenses right now. So you can, it's just a zip file. We don't collect an email address or anything. You can just literally download uh, the zip file and go to town. This works on uh, PC, Mac, Linux, and Raspberry Pi. Um, there are no dependencies required. You unzip it and then you run the exe and it's a zero dependency uh, runtime. So you don't have to have uh, CRuby locally. You don't have to have any compiler tools. It just works, uh, which is just really exciting. Um, we also have fiddle.dragonruby.org. And the beauty of it is that because we're using uh, the LLVM tool chain, uh, there's, a com uh, there's a compiler backend for LLVM, which is WASM. So this allows me to actually run the same uh, games that are run on desktop and and console, of course, and mobile on on the web also. So uh, if, if you go to fiddle.dragonruby.org, I've got an actual code editor, and uh, you have the actual game running on the right side. So I just go through a tutorial that shows how to create like a really cool um, warp drive 
kind of environment. And uh, again, uh, this I mean, this is evaluating the code that you're seeing inside inside of the screen. So if I actually go in and uh, let's say hide that line, it actually hot, hot loads the environment and and uh, and just it's, it's magical. It, 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 I feel like a kid all over again, just uh, uh, working on this stuff. Um, so, I mean, just as a local environment, uh, again, it's, it's a hot load environment. So I can go in and be uh, args.outputs. Um, we'll say I'm going to create a sprite. And I'm going to create a sprite at uh, 0, 0, uh, width and height of 100. And uh, Dragon Ruby has uh, some sprites already loaded in the directory, so you can just type in uh, square slash uh, blue dot png. Hopefully, will work. And there you go. You have a blue sky on the screen. And, it, and again, it just kind of hot loads, which is great. Um, and the interesting thing about this runtime or the game engine is that this is this is the only file you need. It's it's that same idea, philosophical idea of just like starting with something just tiny and simple. Um, and the interesting thing is that this function is being invoked at uh, a fixed update loop of 60 frames per second. So I can go in and uh, let's say I'm going to create a variable called x. And uh, still updating good, args.state.x. Uh, I'll increment x by a value. And you'll see that it actually um, is running at 60 frames per second. So if I do uh, state.x is greater than 1280, I want to set it to 0. There's, our, there's a little thing moving around right there. So it's just, it's just really happy. It's a, it's a little, happy little engine. Um, we also have a heads up display. So you've got your like really cool Quake console, uh, which, which actually uh, can eval Ruby code like right, right there, which is fantastic. Um, funny thing enough is that even in fiddle.dragonruby.org, we, you can have the same heads up display. It's tiny, but it's there. And uh, you can actually bring it up right there. And this the same heads up display is running on the web inside of a uh, inside of a browser context. It's just phenomenal. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's kind of like the uh, the you know dev environment we were able to like uh, create. Uh, one one interesting thing uh, I love showing this off is that. Uh, Let's see, if I go to my YouTube, uh, Mirajan, and uh, let's look at, so we'll look at some uh, uh, performance of the actual engine itself. Um, so I'm showing off uh, Unity. It's a, a 2D game engine. I like to pick on Unity because they're the, they're the big boys in town. And um, we'll we'll navigate to about so uh, well what I'm showing what I'm trying to see is like what the render limits are for uh, Dragon Ruby versus Unity the um, frame rates obviously since we're on screen share and video it's not going to be um, perfectly fluid but if you go to if you just type in Dragon Ruby Game Toolkit Performance you can see that and so. I'm uh, rendering uh, 10,000 10, sprites. I'm jumping up to 20,000 sprites on Unity. So at 20,000 sprites, Unity is able to uh, render at 36, 37 frames per second at 20,000 sprites. And then um, I'm going to run the same thing for Dragon Ruby. We do our 20,000 sprites. And we're rendering at 60 frames per second. So you have a compiled C sharp runtime. Um, that is slower than uh, a Ruby runtime for for rendering uh, sprites. So we're we're up to a solid sixty frames per second. It's a it's a moving average. Um, and then I I push the limits. I'm like, well, can we do can we do forty thousand sprites? Let's see what this looks like. Uh, Unity's at 
uh, 16 frames per second at 40,000 sprites. And um, let's see, let's see what we're able to push. Uh, we were not, we're, we weren't able to hit the uh, full 40, uh, 60 frames per second, but we're at 30 FPS for even 40,000 sprites on the screen. Um, the final one, I double it to 80,000 sprites just to see uh, where where we start falling over. And um, what you're going to the interesting thing you'll end up seeing here is that. Uh, you'll actually see uh, the distribution of RNG within Unity kind of start, start to falter. You're gonna see those like lines. You see these like the straight lines starting to come up. Their RNG distribution for uh, for random number generation is is off. And you can kind of start seeing these like little artifacts happening uh, as we as we push these limits to like 80,000 uh, 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 80, sprites on the screen. Um, we got nine frames a second on, uh, six to nine frames a second on Unity. Uh, and again, this is Ruby, hot, a hot load environment. We're getting 13 frames, 15 frames per second, um, and we don't have the we don't have the same uh, like residue and artifacts of like the RNG and the random number generation that uh, you would see on the on the Unity side. Um, the coup de gras or like the the final uh, nail in the coffin um, is the actual file size. So we're one eighth the size of uh, these these uh, like battle hardened engines. So it's a when we got to that point, um, it was it was really exciting and um, and uh, being able to do all the distribution stuff and uh, creating a, a literal single run uh, single source code as a, a source code for um, for a, for a game and having it distributed to all the platforms was. Something that, uh, as an indie, uh, you kind of want to push for because you just don't have the human capital to write a game, rewrite it in another language, rewrite it in another language, fix it, rewrite it in another language, test it, rewrite it. And uh, what I ended up finding myself doing was that that's exactly the boat I found myself in. And so, uh, to to make any kind of indie game dev sustainable um, on a on a long enough timeline with a, with multiple properties, um, we have to. I had to find ways to kind of like beat the beat the averages what could i do to uh be uh, be that be that level of productivity that we saw um that you know we can we can uh, imagine with um with what ruby brings up we all feel it uh when we use the language and um this is this is kind of like the culmination of um all those things uh kind of put together but um that's the game engine um in a nutshell the environment the runtime uh and uh, kind of showed you a demo of the like uh, of some of the render primitives. Um, you can look at the website, uh, and um, I mean you can try the engine out. Uh, again, it was the Nokia Jam .org. So there's actually a game jam that's going on right now, uh, where you have to uh, build build a game with the constraints of the old school Nokia three three thirty three ten. So your your canvas size is eighty four pixels by forty eight pixels. And you can only use these two colors, and that's what you. And with those constraints, is uh, you have to you have to build a game. Um, we have we have a Discord community, uh, discord.dragonruby.org, and that will take you to the community itself. But uh, some of the things that people are building here um, uh, with the engine during the game jam. So we've got like some line of sight for uh, for uh, maybe like an espionage game. Um, some funny animations with regards to it. It's a robo, a robot, the beginning. Um, just, just people, people are having fun. I, I, I don't know how else to say it. And it's, it's the greatest thing where uh, you show like the crazy things that we've gotten used to with Ruby, um, uh, redefining plus sign to always return the same number and their eyes light up and go, what's going on here? You can just redefine plus, that's crazy. But uh, uh, people are doing some like really impressive stuff as far as, uh, pushing the limits um, from 2D into uh, into the 3D space, uh, but yeah, someone made an ASCII cube in in 3D. There you go, using Dragon Ruby. We've got our snake, uh, our snake game. Obviously, you got to have that, uh, but lots of fun. Um, I think that's like 
really all I had uh, as far as uh, demos and kind of giving uh, the background of how this all happened and, and whatnot. Do we have any questions as far as um, from the audience? Uh, let's see, 79. Am I good on time? I think, maybe, possibly. Uh, yes, you are. I, f I think I forgot to uh, start the stopwatch, but you're still good on time. Definitely. That's fine. Um, cool. So, uh, if, uh, if you have any questions, I would, I'm happy to answer them, kind of give details on how we're able to pull it off, pull the, pull this off if you want. Um, I have a, there's a presentation I gave at Ruby Kaigi, uh, it's been not last year, the year before. Uh, so Ruby Kaigi, Amir, Rajan, um, so this is uh, this is the uh, presentation where I go into quite a few of the details of uh, porting to the Nintendo Switch, kind of uh, the uphill battle that was the, that existed there. So uh, you can kind of watch that and get some of the nitty gritty details on some of the like low end C APIs and runtime APIs if you want to dig in. Uh, but um, what else do we have? Uh, can you explain uh, the wa the wa the wasm bit again? Sure. So. Uh, It's all about good timing. Um, so what happened at the end of 2019 was that LLVM took over the world, uh, effectively playing. Um, the final piece uh, of the puzzle was uh, Microsoft adopting it. And um, as as a as of like uh, with .NET Core uh, hitting hitting its hitting its stride, um, Microsoft adopted uh, LLVM in in 2019. So. What that positioned uh, the existing runtime, uh, which is which is Ruby Motion, um, what it allowed us to do is apply the the Clan compiler and the LLVM runtime across all operating systems. The Nintendo Switch uses Clan, PlayStation uses Clan, Xbox uses Clan, Windows does, uh, Google uses Clan, Apple does, iOS is all updated to Clan. As far as Android API twenty six. It uses Clang, so Clang has taken over the world. And one of the interesting things with uh, with Clang is this intermediate representation called LLVM, which stands for Low Level Virtual Machine. And the one of the LLVM targets is WebAssembly. So I can take a front end language that compiles to this intermediate representation, and then that intermediate representation can then target a uh, a chipset architecture, which in this case happens to be WASM, so or WebAssembly, and the the some really smart guys on this side did did the stuff to allow for that uh, for to uh, for WASM to exist, and so we use uh, in fact we're using effectively Enscripten and um, the the compiler toolchain to 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 just create yeah a render canvas inside of inside of inside of WebAssembly. Um, but that's that's kind of that's kind of how uh, WASM worked. It just kind of worked for us. Uh, we didn't have to do anything as uh, once that was released we just pointed it to that target and next thing you know we were able to run this stuff uh, in the browser itself.